Just to say they are preparing to take legal action against Iceland to recover billions of pounds paid out to British savers following the collapse of Iceland's banks. Icelandic voters have rejected for a second time a deal to reimburse the UK and the Netherlands over the failure of IceSave in 2008. The row over the bill comes just a day before a government-appointed commission gives its first view of the future of banking in Britain. Jane Deeth reports. At the second time of asking, Iceland still hasn't warmed to the idea of paying back the £2.3 billion it owes the UK since the collapse of the internet bank iSave. In the second referendum on a compensation deal, 60% of people voted no to paying for a private bank's losses and they'd have paid with interest for the next 30 years. The finance minister said there's no point asking them again. I think it's very hard to interpret this in any other way than, than the fact uh, that the Icelandic people is not prepared to accept uh, payments or shoulder burden unless there is a clear legal uh, obligation to do so. It is obviously disappointing that it seems that the people of Iceland have rejected what was a negotiated settlement. And of course we uh, respect the will of the Icelandic people in this matter and we're going to have to now go and talk to the international partners with whom we work, not least the government of the Netherlands. And, and now it now looks like this process will end up in the, in the courts. There's a legal process going on. The government says it's got an obligation to chase Iceland for the 2.3 billion because we're in a difficult position too and could really use the cash. Butler Jonsson to pick up the pieces and you're listening to Business Daily from the BBC in Reykjavik in Iceland. The anger of the Icelandic people has global ramifications, particularly as Greece and Ireland contemplate swinging cuts in public spending. The Icelandic MP Birgitta Jonsdóttir says a signal is being sent. I think this referendum is a very strong statement from the general public in Iceland saying we refuse to take uh, socialize private debt. And what this will mean for Europe is, uh, and other countries in the world, and that is why very many nations are trying to stop this referendum happening uh, behind the scenes, uh, is that they fear that this will set an example, for example, in Greece. Because people are sick of this. They are really sick of being, uh, having to take on private debt, from, especially from the banksters. So maybe we will um, encourage others to do exactly this, and maybe th this will encourage the financial sector to stop being such leeches on, on the general public. You are proposing to renege on debt, renege on loans made to you. Well, loans that we never asked for, and we didn't, like most of people in Iceland, had no idea about this deal until we were supposed to fork out for it. There are 317,000 people living in Iceland. There were 300-something thousand accounts, ISAF accounts. Each person in Iceland is responsible for 21,000 euros. Okay, we might not pay it directly, but we will pay it uh, by, like, 80,000 Icelanders will pay their income tax on only the interest of this loan that we never asked for. And for me, representing the nation here in Parliament, this is completely unacceptable. But wasn't the time to say that before the great crash? Wasn't the time to say... A lot of these... people tried to say that. A lot but of the point people... is that those banks thrived, seemed to be thriving. It was all on borrowed money, but they seemed to be thriving in a financial system which should have underwritten them. Well, and the time that's... to say we can't underwrite these banks was then, not now. Well, people did say that. Most of the media was owned by the oligarchs that owned the banks. Uh, the banks were only privatised five years prior to the crash. In five years, uh, the independence party ruling the Icelandic country... Elected by the Icelandic people. Not all Icelandic people. Well, the people, argument no, is that, that the people, people elect a government and no, your no, government no. of the time never no, put those things in place. Uh, it never underwrote the, those No, banks. hang on, hang on. Uh, this is not true because it was not... Uh, this is a classic uh, thing for the financial sector that this was a bank in England and the UK and there was also a bank in Germany. An Icelandic None bank. Of, yes. 
Why did none of these countries stop these banks going into their, their territories? The home government, an elected government <coughs> in, in, here in Reykjavik, in this building, uh, was thought to be responsible for its own banks. Of course it is partially responsible. That's why we take so one third of... So you pay the money? No, we take one third of the, of the risk with this, and then the UK and the Dutch, they take the rest of the risk because their own legislation failed as well. Why should we carry their baggage? I'm trying to understand the anger here. I'm quite surprised. Well, well the anger is very simple. I, I don't mean with you, yeah. but I mean other people. No, 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 the, it's quite simple. Uh, the UK government put the terrorist act on Icelanders while we're down. That is where the anger comes from. To freeze funds. From, to freeze funds, but they put us on their website, side by side to al Qaeda, side by side to Zimbabwe. We were there on that website with all the main terrorist states in the world. And this not only, uh, they only froze the assets of Landsbanki, however, what it did, it stopped all credit lines to Iceland. We were facing uh, not getting food, not getting medication, forced into an IMF program. They were experimenting. We're a small country. However, don't forget, we're the first country that this uh, brutal force is used on. This is economic warfare. Birgitte Jons daughter. <laughs> It's now known as the Pots and Pans Revolution. No injuries, few arrests, and instead of blood, streets ran with thrown food. But it was enough to force special elections. The Prime Minister replaced, and two protesters were voted into Parliament. You got it all. Yeah. <laughs> now you are a member of Parliament. Yes, I am. <laughs> That's amazing. So from, from out here to in there, yeah, in the yeah. space of a few months. Yeah. My name is Harald Tarvason. Don't ever, ever give up. Don't ever give up hope. Don't give up. It, I'm sure it's going to take time, but we are with you in our hearts. <laughs> 